spring, you. The spring just small. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on and give God a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Truly our God is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. If I had 10,000 tongues, I could not praise him enough. Our God is awesome. He's mighty. He's magnificent. Our God. He is an awesome God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. I will bless the Lord at all times. Woo. Glory to God. I don't know about y'all, but I will continue to give God the praise. Because truly he is worthy to be praised. Amen. On today we've been celebrating our bishop's birthday. Amen. His actual birthday is Wednesday. Amen. November 18th. Amen. But we thank God for the man of God. Our bishop, our overseer. Amen. And co-founder. We thank God for him. We thank God for what he's done in his life and that which is yet to come. We are excited and exhilarated by the awesome move of God and what God is yet going to do. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but I have no doubts about God and what God is going to do. If God said it, he will do it, huh? Because our God is not a man that he should lie. Glory be to God. And if God says it, you can write that check and put it in the bank because it is so and so it is. Somebody give God glory. Hallelujah. are waiting to see the miracle. But blessed is he uh, that believes and does not see. Glory to God. Blessed is he uh, that already believes even though they don't see. Glory to God. What they're anticipating or what they're expecting. Glory to God. This morning we're going into the Word of God, into the book of Galatians, Epistle of Galatians, written by Apostle Paul to the church in Galatia. Uh, the sixth chapter and the seventh verse. The sixth chapter and the seventh verse. So glad to see all of you on this morning. Amen. God bless you, Sister Shirley D. <laughs> God bless you. So glad to have you this morning. Good to see you, Sister Dorita and all your tribe. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see the Harrisons back with us on this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is just awesome. He's mighty, and we thank God for all that he is doing. The book of Galatians, the sixth chapter in the seventh verse, it reads as this. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, turn that all the way down, please, that shall he also reap. Amen. Amen. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Father, we thank you. We give your name all the praise and the honor and glory. For this is the day that you've made, God. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Open up our spiritual ears that we'll be able to hear what thus saith 
the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is so. And so it is. God bless you. You may have your seats all over the house. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. This morning I want to talk a little bit about the boomerang effect about the boomerang effect. Some may know what a boomerang is. Some may not. A boomerang is an object, it's a flat object that's built in such a way that if you throw it correctly, it will return to you. Now, the boomerang effect describes a social psychology situation in which a person who is presented with a persuasive message and then adopts the opposite stance as a result. They essentially boomerang to the other side which is where the name of this phenomenon comes from. Have you ever talked to someone and you gave them instructions, and in you giving them the instructions, they did totally the opposite of what you instructed them to do? Glory be to God. You may have said, uh, don't throw down the trash, don't litter, and just because you said it, they opened their car door and they throw out everything in their car and leave it on the ground. Because they do the extreme opposite of what you've asked them to do. <laughs> Research suggests that this occurs because when a person feels that their freedom of choice is being infringed upon, so they sometimes react by going to the opposite stance. You know, have you ever heard or heard someone say, or maybe they said to you, you can't tell me what to do. I had one that used to say, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, and just because you ask them to do certain things. Now, if you hadn't asked them, they would have done it. But when you ask them and put them in the position to do something, they want to do something totally opposite. The statement often is, don't let nobody put you in a box. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the statement often. Glory be to 
to God. We forget about even in that we must be obedient to the things of God. Glory be to God. And we have to understand that sometimes God speaks through individuals. You may not have clarity or understand. You may be like the children of Israel standing on the side of the mountain that says God speaks can speak to me too. You know, they were getting a little perturbed because he was speaking to Moses. You know, and a lot of times people this day have that same attitude. You know, God can talk to me too. He can, but are you listening? Oh my God. We find out that the children of Israel found very swiftly that they rather listened to the voice of Moses than the voice of God. Because when God began to speak, things began to shake. The earthquake hit the ground. All kind of stuff took effect in the book of Exodus when God began to speak. So they may have decided... They made a decision. God, you can speak to Moses. <laughs> you don't have to speak to us no more. Oh, glory to God. But oftentimes, we feel that we're getting over with something. Just because we decide to do the opposite of what we've been asked to do, the opposite of what God says to do. Sometimes God says, I'm calling you. I'm calling you to minister the gospel. I'm calling you to meet the needs of the people. I'm calling you in to various directions. And you're like, who, me? No, nah, God, you can't be talking to me. You must be talking to Sister Joyce over there because I know you can't be talking to me. My Lord. Hello. <laughs> and we do the complete opposite. Next thing you know, we stop coming to church. <laughs> Woo! We decide we're going to do totally different than what the Spirit of the Lord has instructed us. Research suggests this occurs because when a person feels that their freedom, freedom, when their freedom of choice is being infringed upon. So they sometimes react by going the opposite direction. Uh, but what we find out is that even in going in the opposite direction, sooner or later, woo, they come back into position. Sooner or later, they begin to yield to God. The boomerang returns. Sometimes it gets stuck where it is for a little while, but eventually it returns. What you talking about, Pastor Martin? Well, in Galatians, the sixth chapter, the seventh verse, it says, be not deceived. Look, don't be fooled. All your antics and all the things that you're doing and everything that you're going through, don't be fooled. The things that we're hearing around us, the things that different ones are saying, don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Be not deceived. A most important direction to be given to all. It talks about that they are in danger. You don't even realize that your life 
is on the line because you think you're fooling somebody. You're being deceived your own self. Sometimes we deceive our own selves. We'll believe a lie that we told before we believe the truth. Be not deceived. All that is going on around us, the things that are being uttered in our democracy and through the Republicans, don't be deceived. The cure that they're talking about, don't be deceived. There are so many things that's going on that you got to open up, not just your natural eye, but you got to open up your spiritual eye. Because when you open up your spiritual eye and your spiritual ears, you will hear things being said that have not ordinarily been said. Hallelujah. Other words, that's not what came out their mouth. I used to scratch my head and wonder when sometimes I'd say certain things to Apostle Porter and she would hear something totally different than what I said. And I'm, I'd scratch my head because I'd be like, but I didn't say that, is what I would be thinking, you know. I would not be one that would verbalize that, but I was thinking, I didn't say that. But what she did was she looked beyond my speech and saw what was in my heart. She saw the spirit behind what's being said. Sometimes we have people that snug up close to us. Mm. And they say this, they say that, you know, they sing your praises. Oh, God. But there's more behind what they're doing and what they're saying than what you're hearing in the natural. You know, they're ones that you have to watch out for because some of them are just seeking the right time and the right opportunity to take possession of what you got going on. Be not deceived. Their own hearts might have deceived them. That which you're thinking, it's not that way. I often reflect on the message, it's not what it looks like. Don't be deceived. You look around and you see those that are not saved, that have not accepted Christ in their life. It looks like they're just prospering. It looks like they're just blessed. Glory be to God. But can I tell you that the enemy will give you some stuff too? He'll give you whatever you want in order to keep you. Mm. And so we look at that and, and we get deceived. We feel like maybe I'm on the wrong path. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing because the neighbor over down the road, they don't even go to church. They don't even do nothing. They party hardy all the time. Glory be to God. And we look at that and we say, well, maybe... I just need to come on out of the church. I don't want to be a part of the church because I see what my grandma goes through. I don't want to be a part of the church because I see what my parents have gone through. You know, and we are being deceived. The hearts are being deceived. They might be deceived by their false opinions on these subjects. <laughs> they think because you don't have all these material things, that church is not the way to go. <laughs> Jesus 
is not the way to go. There are some that are deceived that they feel just by coming to the church building, they're on their way to glory. But may I tell you this morning that the church building is not going to save you. Mm. But it's giving your heart unto Jesus. Glory to God and hearing his voice and following him. This is what gives us a place in glory. Oh God. They might be in danger of being deceived by their leaders. Uh oh. Who perhaps held the opinion that some of the persons who practice these things could be saved. Oh, I'm a morally good person. I do what's right. I give to the poor. <laughs> oh, God. But do you love Jesus? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Are you willing to give up all your materialistic things and follow him? I find out that when we're willing to give up these things, oh God, that's when he blesses us with even the more. But it's when we put those things in front of him and make them of God, God will have no parts of that. Oh my goodness. Be not deceived. This implies that there was no necessity of their being deceived. They might know the truth. They might easily understand these matters. It might be plain to them that those who indulged in these things could not be saved. Be not deceived. God is not mine. Look, you may fool me, you may fool your neighbor, you may fool your best friend, you might even fool your spouse, but you cannot fool God. Be not deceived. God is not mine. He cannot be opposed on or mocked. He knows what our real character is. He will judge us accordingly. The word rendered mock properly to turn up the nose or in scorn. You know, he does not hold his nose up. You can't fool God. The sense is that God could not be imposed on or could not be insulted with impunity or successfully to mock is properly, to imitate, to mimic, to imitate in contempt or derision, to deride, to laugh at, to ridicule, to defeat, to elude, to disappoint. You can't do that to God. You can't fool them. It's amazing to me how sometimes we'll run and hide and do different things because who we supposed to be a man or a woman of God is coming. Whether it's your pastor or uh, or an elder or a, a prophetess or an evangelist or whoever it is, may even be a bishop coming through, and you try to fool them. You stop doing the negative things that you were doing, you know, when you were caught standing there gossiping and your mouth was wide open and you immediately changed the subject to something else. You may be able to fool them. 
but you cannot fool God. Amen. Do you realize that God watches us 24-7? He's got his angels dispatched round and about us that can tell some stories of what we're doing and what we're not doing. Do you understand that Jesus sits on the right hand of God and he's steady asking God, God, don't kill him. Please don't kill him, God. Give him another chance. Oh, God. Don't be fooled. Because God is not fooled. <laughs> Whatsoever a man soweth, it's coming back. May not be today. May not even be tomorrow. But sooner or later, by and by, it's coming back. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh of the flesh shall reap corruption. Look, we keep worrying about our fleshly needs and our fleshly desires. If we put as much interest into the spirit realm as we put into the flesh, We'd have some stuff going on. We probably would be translated just like you know and walk on up out of here. Glory be to God because we spend a lot of time thinking about our flesh. We think a lot of time, take a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to wear, how I'm going to look, what I'm going to eat. Woo, I need this, I need that. You know, I, 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 I kind of felt sorry when I got in the car yesterday, Pastor Lady, because uh, y'all know I'd be guilty. I worked Pastor Lane all day long, and neither one of us ate lunch nor dinner, and it was almost 7 o'clock when we got up out of here. I usually tell folk, if you're hungry, y'all better let me know. Because a lot of times when I get caught up moving, I'm gone. And I don't think about nothing else. I just do what I got to do and get it done. Amen. You know? And so you have to pull on my cocktail every now and then and say, hunger, hunger. <laughs> Because I'm purpose driven. <laughs> Ooh, God. You know, and when you have a vision in your eyesight, when you see something, you keep moving until it begins to formulate. <laughs> it's just amazing. I could see you, Elder, <laughs> just sitting there looking at them bags and trying to figure out what design you were going to put on. And then tediously laying every stone in place mm, to make it become that which you're looking for. Immediately when I saw that right there, I said, that's proper. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, because the just walk by faith. We live by faith. So even when we have to go without, we know that God is able to fill every crook and every cranny. He's able to do everything that needs to be done. We got to stop paying so much attention to the fleshly needs. I need a TV. I need, no you don't. Go somewhere and sit down. You want. That is not a need. That's a want. And God will give you the desires of your heart. He will. Uh, 
But you got to first give him his desires. Because when you line up with God, he will place desires in your heart that will match up with him. You God. Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever a man reap, so that he will also reap. If you keep reaping negativity, everything about you is negative. You talk negative. Negative, negative. You ain't going to be nothing negative, negative. Why this happening? Negative, negative. Why not just go with the flow? Why you got to come up against the progress of God? Why are you always kicking against something? Just because it's not what it's, we're familiar to, we kick against it, you know? I guess it's like the baby in the womb about time when it got, starts getting nearer for the time for them to come out and they start, you have to see the belly go whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, the baby is stretching and, and doing all kind of things in there. Glory be to God causing havoc in the belly. God is trying to do some things and we stretch it and we knock it and we fight and we want to come out, but at the same time, we don't. We want better, but at the same time, we don't want to change. We want God to bless us, but we don't want to bless nobody else. Oh, God. I often say when you hold your fist like this, there's nothing that can come in, nothing that goes out, nothing that can come in. But you want to be blessed. If you want to be blessed, you got to open that hand up so that you can receive. You got to open up your spirit that you can receive the things of God. Jesus, hallelujah. you got to be open to the spirit of God, to the things of God. If you want to be blessed, then you need to start blessing others. A lot of times when you find yourself doing things for other people, you know, you may not have many groceries in your house. But when you start taking from them groceries to bless somebody else, you're going to look up and be like, my goodness, they keep bringing food, they keep doing this, they keep doing that. Ooh, where's all this? What am I going to do with all this food? Keep giving. Keep a cycle going. <sighs> the more you give, the more he gives to you. Be not deceived. Stop trying to fool God. Stop trying to fool yourself. Stop trying to fool others. God is not marked. He is not fooled, not one bit by what we do. Because he sees deeper than our flesh. He sees all the way down into the heart of the matter. He knows the very intent of the heart. He knows what's behind what you're doing. Are you doing it because you love God or are you doing it because you want to be seen? Uh, God is not marked. Why do you do what you do? We got to put the love of God there first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all other things will be added unto you Matthew 6 and 33 glory be to God we want to seek God I don't know about y'all but more God more God more God I want more of him I need more of him in my life I need more of him in my heart I want to imitate the very aspects of God I want to imitate the very character of God glory be to God try to mock God, but I want to try to be like him. Oh, yeah. Woo. I was created in his image. Yeah. I was created in his likeness. Yeah. Woo. Why can't my attitude be like him? Why can't my character be like him? 
know we in the flesh. We use these fleshly bodies for an excuse. What? No, no, they said no excuse, Pastor Martin. It's real. Yes, I understand. You feel the pain. You feel the hurt. But so did Jesus. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Oh. Jesus was in the flesh. I know he was in he was the son of God. But he was in a fleshly body. That means he felt every strike. Woo, every pain. Everything that was done to him. He felt it in his flesh. But his spirit said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Let the will of God be done in your life. Ask God, Father, is this you? Is this your will? Because we get into a time where they're talking about sticking chips in folks. We're getting into a time where they're sneaking stuff into shots and all kind of stuff. Mm. Ask God, God, is this your will? God, do you want me to take this shot? Do you want me to do this thing, God? I need to hear from you, God. I need to know which way you want me to go. Don't be deceived. Man is trying to deceive us. Those in high places may try to deceive. Those that think they know what they think they know may try to deceive. But the only one that knows the whole truth of the matter is our Heavenly Father. He knows all about what's being done. He knows all about everything. Hold on to God. Speak to him. Listen to him. Listen to his voice. Let him direct. Now you got to know him, his voice. For he said, his sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. So you got to know that you know that you know that you know God's voice so that you will not be in the group that the very elect might be fooled. <laughs> oh God. Practice now. If you don't know if you hear God or not, now's the time to practice. Practice hearing God. And see what God says. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what it looks like around us, hear God's voice. Do what he tells you to do, even though it may seem foolish. Because God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. He may tell you to store up a hundred cans or something. He might tell you to store up a thousand. He might tell you to do like Joseph did. Make sure them barns was full so that when the famine came, they had what was needed, not just for them, but enough to share. Hear God's voice. Don't miss out on what God is saying to you. If you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, Today is a good day to accept Christ in your life. We're living in perilous times. We're living in the last days. Glory be to God. And I know, don't know about you, 
but I want my Lord to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. Woo! Thou hast been faithful over few. I'm going to make you rule over many. Yeah. Will you accept him today as your Lord and Savior? If thou wilt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart, that God raised him up from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Mm. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Will you pray with me? Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we're so thankful for this day. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to celebrate with our bishop his birthday, which is on Wednesday. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for blessing the man of God, Bishop Thomas Porter. We thank you for blessing his fiance, Apostle Cynthia Cohen. God, continue to bless them, continue to strengthen them, continue to guide them, continue to direct them. Father, if there's anyone that's listening that is not saved, Father God, we ask that you touch them right now. Touch their hearts that they'll cry out, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? I cannot hold out any longer. Father, we ask that you will forgive them for their sins as they confess. Father, we know that you will wash and forgive and throw the sins in the sea and remember them no more. Father, we ask that you accept them into the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your salvation is free. And we thank you for saving us. If you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, just say, I'm saved. Mm. Amen. We got any saved folks in the house? Amen. Tell them, I'm saved. You on Facebook, just type it in. I'm saved. Glory to God. We love you. God bless you is our prayer. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And know that you're able to make it. Through him, all things are possible. God bless you. Amen.